It is plain indeed that in spite of later estrangement, hobbits are relatives of ours, far nearer to us than elves or even than dwarves. Of old they spoke the languages of men, after their own fashion, and liked and disliked much the same things as men did. But what exactly our relationship is can no longer be discovered. The beginning of hobbits lies far back in the elder days that is now lost and forgotten. Only the elves still preserve any records of that vanished time, and their traditions are concerned almost entirely with their own history, in which men appear seldom and hobbits are not mentioned at all. Yet it is clear that hobbits had in fact lived quietly in Middle-earth for many long years before other folk became even aware of them. Hello friends, Yoiston here and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today we will be taking a look at the origin and beginning of hobbits, since we know the beginning of most other races but not the small folk. Now since there is no concrete or exact explanation to be found concerning the origin of hobbits in Tolkien's works, I will use geography, evolution, and the words of the hobbits to identify some possible explanation about their origin. As I often try to do, I'll link some related articles and videos in the description and cards above, some of which helped in the creation of today's video. Now let's begin our tale. In 1050 of the Third Age, hobbits came into the wider tales of the world, as the Harfoots, one of the kindreds of the hobbits, crossed the Misty Mountains and came into Eriador, fleeing the shadow of Dol Guldur and the danger that came to the north. We do know that the hobbits lived in the Vales of the Anduin before and even after this year, as some of the Stores continued to live there even into the later years of the Age, as Smeagol, born in 2430 of the Third Age, was one of these hobbits. Now as the quote at the beginning of this video indicates, we also know that the hobbits share some ancestral ties with the big folk, men. Hobbits share in the gift of Iluvata, as, just like men, they can die of old age and their spirits pass beyond Arda, going to the halls of Mandos and passing beyond. But I would argue that the reason we can't know how hobbits became an offshoot of the race of men is the frame narrative. The hobbits themselves did not keep records of their ancient ancestry, or if they did they may be lost in some old form of hobbitish language, so it is impossible for us to know of their origin, since the characters did not, and what we read is what they and some others wrote. Now men first awoke in Hildorian in Middle-earth during the year one of the first age, meaning that the ancestors of the hobbits did also, and they could not have lived in the years of the trees or before. Three houses of men, the Edain, went west into Beleriand, and they would take part in the events of the First Age, and their descendants would be the Numenorians and the Dunedain, the men of the west. But for the sake of this video I'm more concerned with the Edain, most likely related to the house of Hador, that began the journey west, but stayed in Rovanian, of whose descendants were the middlemen. The descendants of these men, the middlemen, are the Rohirrim, the Bardings or men of Dale and Lake Town, the Bjornings, and I would also argue that the Hobbits are in that category as well. These people all have ties to Rovanian and the Vales of the Anduin, as their ancestors such as the Eothade lived there at some point, so the geography shows us that they must have had some kind of kinship. This idea is further developed by the language of the Hobbits, Hobbitish being alike to the language of the Rohirrim, Rohiric. As noted in Mary Adok Brandybuck's writings about old words and names in the Shire, some old words and names in Hobbitish are cognates of words and names in Rohiric. Furthermore, the Rohirrim have tales about the Hobitlan, hole builders, that match the description of Hobbits, as the Hobitlan were only myths to the Rohirrim until they came into contact with Merry and Pippin and later Frodo and Sam during the events of the Lord of the Rings. This means that the Eothade, the ancestors of the Rohirrim, knew of the hobbits in some fashion. Thus it may be that the hobbits share blood with the men of Rovanian, and although the First Age, Second Age, and first thousand years of the Third Age equal to a little over five thousand years, and while that isn't a lot of time for evolution to happen, hobbits aren't so different from men to where this would be impossible especially if their ancestors were already somewhat different than other men and more akin to the shorter, stouter, and more strong-footed hobbits anyway, or if there was some divine intervention in the evolution of the hobbits from Iluvata or the Valar. In a fantasy world such as this, it is possible that the hobbits were created in such a way, with realistic evolution and some possible divine fantasy elements involved as well. During the Second Age, while men and elves journeyed east after the destruction of Beleriand, it's possible that the hobbits or their evolving ancestors stayed hidden among their own kind, as they may have done during the Elder Days in the Vales of the Anduin, since they are indeed a stealthy folk. 
It follows that they were then discovered in the Third Age, when they crossed the Misty Mountains in 1050. With all of that said concerning the origins and evolutions of hobbits and their distant relations among men, I would argue that hobbits were a forgotten offshoot of the men of Rovanian, and they became their own folk in the world. In the Third Age, the hobbits emerged, and most of them migrated to the Shire, and entered into the histories of the world of Arda, as well as the mighty stories therein. Since there is no way to be exactly sure about the origin of hobbits, let me know what you think about how they came to be in the comments below. Perhaps this evolutionary route was involved, and there may have been some measure of divine intervention. Or it could be that the hobbits were created through some other means. No matter their beginning, hobbits are valiant and extraordinary characters within Middle-earth. Their kindness and courage built a new legacy for the kindred that before their great deeds was, and still is, unknown. Perhaps we should not let the idea of renown or history influence our deeds, but instead let the virtues within us guide us. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button and share this with a friend. Let me know your thoughts, questions, corrections, and additions for this video in the comments below. And please check out our music channel, Facebook, Twitter, Merch, and Patreon for our podcast and Discord server in the description as well. Finally, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today, and I'll see you all again next week with another livestream with our friend Royan from our Patreon. I will be livestreaming at 2pm Eastern Standard Time, and I hope to see you all then. As always, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure, until the next one, my great friends.